money. So as you can see over in the corner there on the chair is the pink scarf and there's nothing on the loom. So I did finish that last night and we'll get a closer look at that later on. But the next piece that I am working on is warping for my next scarf. This black is the same as the pink that I used for the warp on that scarf and the blue that I used on the warp for the first one. So we're gonna get this warped. The process for that basically is to take the yarn from back here, through this, across the room, um, as far as, as long as I want it. Uh, what you can't see right now is I have a peg on the other side of the room that it's gonna wrap around and come back, and come back through and keep going. That creates the, uh, basically one continuous warp, and is what we use uh, to weave. You might not be able to see it, but I have attached some scrap yarn to the heddles in a couple of places. That's to mark out the width that I want and to try to roughly center it. I've been having a rough time with centering things since I started, so I'm hoping that will help. So first thing that I do is tie roughly in line with where I'm going to start one end of the yarn to this little lashing beam. And we use the slang hook to just bring it through. And walk it across the rim. I'm just gonna pull that in ever so slightly. And put it there. So what I use for um, holding my peg on the other side of the room is actually a, a step ladder, as you'll see in a second, so it puts it at a decent height. Anyway, so this you can see is back, both backwards and forwards through the same slot. Then it goes over the back beam, so that it's tensioned there, and comes forward through the next one. So every other one I have to take under the, the, the next one is already wrapped around the beam. So just being careful not to put two in the same slot and to make sure I don't miss any slots. Um, I don't think I've missed any yet, but I've definitely put two in the same one, uh, which depending on where it is, isn't so hard to fix, but when it's in the middle, it's kind of a pain uh, to make sure that you even everything out. This particular yarn with its long repeat, repeats when used for warp makes really neat stripes. And when I pair it with another yarn with also long repeats, so either another colorway of the same, theoretically the same colorway of the same, um, or, the, or a different yarn that has long color repeats like the one I used for the pink scarf, which was, um, was a different, uh, very different kind of yarn in terms of how it was spun. This is a very tightly spun yarn, um, works really well for warp. The other one was much more loosely spun and was really not good for warp. Um, but together with their color repeats, make a really pretty color transitioning scarf. And when I use a solid color 
as the weft with this as the warp, then um, the stripes show really well. Like on the blue one. For this one, I'm going to try using the just a different colorway of the same yarn. So this one will be this really nice black and green as the warp, and <clears throat> excuse me, and a green um, for the weft. going to turn the camera so that you can see the other side of the warping process and uh, keep working on this. So let's so you can also see I've been kind of collecting Christmas on the floor too, so there's boxes and everything in the way, I apologize. relatively okay welcome back I'm just going to show some different angles of the warping so this is what the back looks like when it's all warped on as you can see they're all two strands together and they're going through the slot actually I'm not sure you can see that but that's what's going on there if we come along here there's everything warped along the other end so what I'm gonna do is tie off a choke chain at that end cut those loops and then wind everything back on there uh, before we start the next piece of it, which is um, making sure that some of the yarn is going through the holes and some is going through the slots. So that's what it looks like when it's the first part of warping is finished. Welcome back. So I have cut the ends of the warp on the other side and I'm now getting ready to wind it on to the back beam. So we'll get that started. So basically, that involves tightening this end, and I'm double checking to make sure that the ratchet and pulse is going to lock in that direction because uh, the other night when I did this, I did it backwards the first time, so that was a real pain in the neck. So those are locking in place there, and then these go under here at various different spots to do a couple of things. These help with making sure that the tension is even um, because if you've ever kind of bunched anything up or rolled anything up, you know how it gets bigger in the middle and thinner at the sides as bits of the sides start to slide off and make it wider. So the idea of these is that they help to prevent that. The other thing that they do is they make sure that um, the different strands aren't lying right on top of each other so they don't get tangled up. When you have one of these every so often, it's gonna reset the, an, an even open space between them. And if you're doing it every revolution or so of the back beam, you know that there's never gonna be a point, even if things did get a little sticky, this yarn is not terribly sticky, but uh, if you were using a warp that was a little bit more grabby, or a warp that was a little more grabby, you wouldn't have that problem of not being able to undo it. So what we're doing is trying to do it relatively evenly and um, giving these a good tug to make sure that they're tightened on. I've tried a couple of different ways of doing this, so, um, and I still haven't been super successful in any way I've done it, so I'm gonna keep trying different ways <laughs> until I figure out one that works.
So it's all wound on, and now what I'm going to do is make sure that there is yarn in all the slots and in all the holes, and that's what will allow us to create the weaving effect because this one will stay steady and this one will go like this as we move the up at the heddle up and down and that will allow us to pass the weft through creating the uh, enclosing the weft and creating the uh, the fabric itself so a couple things you can see this this side we're okay this side I was a little short but it's still relatively centered versus what I've done in the past so I'm gonna get started on this side and grab my slaying hook so the one that's in the slot can just stay in the slot. And then what I'm going to do is, this is the hole next to it. So this is gonna go through there. Oops. And just let the ply on that. So I'm gonna do that again. It's this one, that hole, pull it through. You could, I could do it to the other side, but where I'm a little short on this side, it makes sense to slide it one more over this way versus one more over that way. So one there. And one there. to make sure that in the back when I pick them up and kind of slide them around one that I've got the right ones and two that they're not um, badly crisscrossed there it doesn't create too many problems but as I get close to the end it can make things a little more um, a little more wonky Alright, so I'm going to do that across the whole range 